All right, Freedom Family, let's talk. Things are getting pretty heated out there, aren't they? Things are getting to be moving faster than we can keep track of. Even with our whole crew here at Adam versus the Man and all of my supporters trying to keep me informed and to know what's going on, we are in one of those times when it's just too much. Now, there are a number of big questions we have to ask ourselves. And I'm so grateful that we have you joining us today for the cool, calm, collected conversation that we know is all the more important to have in times like this. Now, the first question that I'm tempted to ask is, does what we are experiencing right now represent a unique phenomenon, an isolated historical incident? Or is this the end times? Is this the big acceleration? Is this, is this what the asymptote feels like? Is this us moving past the era of statism entirely? Could this be the high watermark of government, the last splash before it comes back down? I wonder, and I don't think this is a question that we could ever have a truly satisfying answer to and be able to say, yes, this is it. This is, this is where we are because that would mean we need to know not only where we've come from, which we can trace to a certain degree, but we'd have to know where we are going. What is the trajectory? And you know that I am more confident than ever towards freedom. <laughs> Through Adam versus the man, we are going to get to freedom. Voluntary society, the, the voluntary society that we envision is inevitable the question is on that bigger road that that acceleration now look acceleration towards freedom maybe this is a deceleration maybe this is an acceleration but i know that the real progress towards freedom does not happen in times of chaos. It happens quietly in the periods in between. So the next question, where are we going with this? Well, to answer that, we have to look at where we have been. Now for that, we have to look at the two big crises we find ourselves in the midst of right now. George Floyd and the coronavirus. What's the connection? Just to go back a little ways here, we know that Trump is the greatest trick the Democrats ever pulled on the Republicans. How on earth did the grand old party end up nominating a New York liberal from this background of big government supporting socialization of this. I just, it, it was, it was amazing, truly amazing. But do the Democrats want him there? Not anymore. No. Is it because he went rogue and he suddenly became a threat to their power? No, no, it's not that. This is just the power struggle among the elites, the superclass, that we should come to expect. We should understand is just how society works right now. So what was the coronavirus? What was the crisis? First of all, the virus itself was nothing more than a funky off-season flu, and probably less deadly than a regular flu. 
So as a crisis, we know the real crisis is the forced unemployment crisis, not the virus itself. And what was the excuse? The death count that's come down over and over and over again. And now that it's down at a tiny fraction of what they were using to scare us into shutdowns and lockdowns and martial law and to giving up our power and to allowing them to rip us off to have nine plus trillion dollars of liquidity into the market. That doesn't come from the magical money fountain people that comes from us every time they create more money with the system. It devalues the dollars in your bank account and your back pocket. It lowers the purchasing power of every dollar by every American who is living, surviving on fixed income. It is theft. It is a ripoff. That was the point. But was there a counter narrative? Was there something deeper going on? Remember at first Trump was against the hysteria. He came out and said it was no blue, no big deal. We can, we can handle this. And then three weeks later, he's bragging, <clears throat> straight up bragging at the White House press briefings about how much he's doing to fight the virus. And the, remember the first thing he did, <clears throat> first big thing, I think, cut travel from Europe, to and from Europe, unless it was essential. That was, that was his big intervention. And of course, China. China, excuse me. I need to go with the modern Trumpian pronunciation here. This was a trap that the Democrats set for Trump. And he walked right away. And what was what was the uh, what was the bait? Nine plus trillion dollars in liquidity, fascism, authoritarianism, more of your him coming straight out and saying it. What what was this, the phrase? I don't I don't remember the exact wording, but he came out and said, No, no, I have absolute authority. It was like reminded me of Nixon. Well, when the president does it, that means it is not illegal. Uh, and I, the socialism was was obvious from before this started. But the fascism with Trump coming out and saying, well, we're just going to buy up some businesses. Some businesses are going to go out of business and then, but don't worry, they'll come back with new ownership. Fascism, the, the merging of corporations and the state. I mean, you can call it a matter of degrees. You could have denied it before, but now, really after the 2000, I mean, like just at what point do we go, oh yeah, governments pretending to be capitalists are really there to serve their corporate masters in a system of corporate oligopoly of, 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 of some sort of, some, some degree of fascism. It doesn't matter to what, to what degree. What is the point? What is the point of the institution? Keep the rich getting richer and the poor getting poor, which brings us back to this narrative about Donald Trump. He walked into this trap where he thought, oh, look, look, I can walk in. I, you know what? Screw them. I'll get out of this. I can get out of anything. And he, at some point, I think he realized it was a trap. You notice how he started changing the narrative to drum up his supporters' hostility towards state governors and, and local shutdowns and lockdowns. You see how he changed his tune? He realized he was in a trap. He had one foot in and he still had one foot out and was going, all right, let me, let me get this, let me get this foot out and out of the trap. I'm, I know we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to start making, we're going to, I'm going to retweet something that says hashtag, hashtag fire Fauci. You remember that? Yeah. Oh yeah. We're going to turn against the, the lab coat mafia. I'm going to make it look like I'm against all this. We did what we had to, what was reasonable. And then he's going to, He's gonna try, he tries he tries to get his foot out and he's like he's got, he's got his other foot out here on solid ground solid political economic ground he's gonna send out checks with his signature on them right and he goes and he goes to pull his foot out of the trap and then when he realizes he, he's got to push on this foot there's a banana peel underneath it and that banana peel is named George Floyd. And who's behind this? The mainstream media, obviously. Now, 
we're going to get to go over and we'll have plenty of time to review all the new bad cop porn that's come out in the last few months, not just with Corona, with the last few days with the protests against George Floyd, stuff that's not making the news of, of crowds of protesters being run over by police cars of people being shot at by national guard troops on their front porches in american suburbia the thing about the george floyd murder is that it's quite commonplace why did it turn into the flashpoint that it has now today and there's a connection with Corona and the shutdowns and the lockdowns and the desperation for the looting. It's been actually kind of disappointing to hear nobody as yet, not that I've been listening exhaustively when so many people are yelling into the void right now, but I haven't heard a whole lot of mention of the desperation of people. If you're a poor black man in America today and you lost your job, because of the forced unemployment crisis, because of the virus. And you know that you live in a country that doesn't care about you, where you're lucky to keep your home, you're lucky to get assistance for food, that you've essentially had your balls cut off. And it's all the same system. It's also been disappointing to hear very few reports that there has been targeted looting where the rioters are going after businesses that have donated to police associations. You donate to a police association. That's not how that works in America. No, very rare. Maybe a few, maybe perhaps a few small donors are naive enough to think that you make a donation to a police association. No, you're buying extra protection. Even, even in, like, I, I grew up in California. California, they have the California Highway Patrol 1199, which is their code for officer down association. And if you donate enough money, you get a badge you can carry in your wallet that says friend of the 1199 association you get pulled over you hand that over with your driver's license you get a license plate frame and a sticker for the back of your car so you get pulled over no oh, they know they're talking to a friend there's so many people with that you know it, 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 oh to hear to hear all this to see all the bumper stickers blue lives matter and the thin blue line you go and then oh oh that's why you put that sticker on the car that's cop repellent ah i get it okay you have to consider all of these counter narratives now if there is a business in the united states that is sponsoring i think sponsoring is right rather than donating to the police is a more appropriate term sponsoring the police directly by choice and to the average black man in america the police force is a terrorist organization by definition uses criminal violence to intimidate for political ends it's not to get someone elected or not political what is a political end <laughs> to rip people off to keep the poor getting poorer and the rich getting richer. So when they go to loot, it doesn't matter if it's a police owned uh, sponsoring business or not. If it's Target, and I, I bet somewhere Target, just to be the friendly corporate organization that they are, donates to police associations one way or another. And if not, they pay a lot in taxes. You don't see any of these looters or rioters going after underground businesses they're not like government raiding basement salons operating in civil disobedience in violation of shutdown orders no they are being terrorized 
today in the United States. And I would say, you know, everybody. It's not so much black versus white as rich versus poor. And not that the racial element is irrelevant, certainly. It is hugely relevant here in the history of black Americans and where black people find themselves in America today under the unique terrorism of modern metropolitan police departments. Notice, not so much a problem out here in the sticks. Jim, I haven't seen a cop out here since I got here four years ago. It's a good time to get away from this. It's a good time to separate, to vote with your feet, to vote with your wallet. So we found out about George Floyd because the mainstream media wanted us to find out about George Floyd. But Adam, there was a viral video, didn't you? Yeah, I watched it. Yeah, there are viral videos like that all the time that you don't see. Why did America see the George Floyd video? Not because, I mean, what, it got 15, 20,000 shares on Facebook like in the first day. I think it was a lot. It was, it was big. It was, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not but even, even incidents like that happen on a regular basis in America. Why did this one become this crisis now? Because the media wanted it to. And this is all a setup. This is not the revolution. We're not here for a revolution. We're here for an evolution. To continue the evolution. To forward the evolution. To be part of humanity's great, beautiful dance forward. And while I certainly cheer on anybody who's challenging state power, the next question we have to ask is, do we jump in? Even the Mennonites are doing it. The Amish are out with signs saying justice for George Floyd. And I certainly would say that in that individual case, the call has been heard. This officer is no longer behind the thin blue line. He is going to be thrown to the wolves. He is going to get locked in a very small room for a very long time. And if he comes out, he is going to be sexually assaulted in prison. He's going to be in solitary the whole time in protective custody. And it better be more than the 12 and a half years they gave to Officer Noor for killing Justine uh, Damron in Minneapolis a few years ago, 2017. He had 12 and a half years for, for and that genuinely was an accidental. This was not. George Floyd, you could say it was perilous. You know, is it is it murder one? Is it murder three? Legal designations. I don't. I don't particularly care. It could be, uh, it w whatever they want to call it. As long as he gets more than twelve and a half years, and he spends it all in solitary, I think that would be uh, the, the scrap of justice we can expect from the system today. So, if our interest really is greater justice, what do we do? What do we do in this situation? Like our friend Luke Wanky, do we do we jump in and drive from New York to Minneapolis and grab a gun and jump on board? No. I don't know the answer for everyone. But I know the answer for me. I will continue to cheer on all who fight for justice in whatever way they see fit. And I will cheer with special glee when they start burning down police stations and actually taking them over, as we have seen happen. But I know that I will do nothing as long as I can to contribute to violence, to anger, to conflict. 
Because ultimately, it is never the best path to freedom, to justice, to peace. I will continue to spread this message. I will continue to speak to this awareness and do everything I can to encourage people to learn from this, to be ready for perhaps the next period of upheaval, to be ready perhaps for this upheaval, to be part of this uptick as we get to the asymptote. And it might be along with all this chaos. It might be along with periods of government collapse that we just continue taking on. And while the mainstream media wants you to focus on this and to look at Trump hiding in a bunker and to send you scary images of protests and riots, the significance of everything they want you to see in the news is far outweighed by the beautiful, positive progress of love that we make every day as a species. They don't put it on the news when there's one less kid going to bed hungry. They don't put it on the news when there's one less life ruined by the drug war. They don't put it on the news when People successfully go into a hospital and get the latest technology to extend their life in ways that wasn't possible just years before. And you really count your blessings and stay in that attitude of gratitude. Did I just use a bumper sticker by accident? I did not mean to rhyme, but I mean what I say. When you stay in that attitude of gratitude and see how much progress humanity is making every day but here with adam versus the man you can stay cool calm and collected